Welcome to a very special edition of Studio From Home with the Art Gallery in Nova Scotia. I'm Bonnie and I'm a visual artist and printmaker. Today I'll be showing you a fun and colorful printmaking technique called Colograph that you can do at home with just the materials you find at hand. Shall we get started? This activity is inspired by an etch print, Crucifixion, which we see here by Ruth Rideout. Ruth was a multidisciplinary artist and educator from Yarmouth, Nova Scotia. In her prints and paintings, she reflected the people and place she lived in. As a printmaker, she used a technique called aquatint to make prints that were rich with texture, form, and tonal values. In crucifixion, she created different areas of texture, conveying a sense of physical separation between the foreground, the middle, and distant space. The fluid lines she drew cutting across the shapes look as if they're random marks, but she made them to tie the distinct shapes together. The colograph technique I'm showing you today is another form of printmaking that also strongly relies on the use of textures and shapes. To build your colograph, you'll need some tools. You'll need a piece of cardboard. It could be a food box board, it could be a cover of an old hardcover book or a sketchbook, it could be a piece of mat board like this, as long as it's rigid and you can glue to the surface. You'll need some glue. You need a white waterproof glue. I'm using LePage brand today. You'll need a brush, stiff bristles to spread the glue, pencil and eraser, maybe some popsicle sticks, a pair of scissors. You also need a styrofoam tray or a plastic bowl to hold the glue. You'll need a soft rag for cleaning up like an old t-shirt and you'll need a container of water. You will need to gather some simple materials from around the house to make textures. Masking tape is excellent. As well as string, yarn, a piece of yarn, lace of any type. This is a piece of textured material. You can also use textured wallpaper. Netting from food bags. What a good, wonderful tool to use. I'm going to use some stick-on letters that I got and see how they work. You can use food box board again, cut it up. Corrugated cardboard, if you flatten it down, is great. What you're looking for is something that is not too thick not sharp and pointy, and can be glued down. To begin, I have drawn a simple outline of a bird on a piece of food box board, and then I'll cut it out. And I'm gonna take some masking tape, like this, and I'm just gonna make little bits and pieces. I'm also going to take a little bit of tissue paper and I'm going to wrinkle it up and glue it onto the surface. So I'm going to put some glue on my bird. Now I'm going to take some paper and I'm just going to wrinkle it up and glue it on. This time, I'm going to paint directly onto my plate. Now that my bird's dry a little, I'm going to glue him on and finish off making the plate. So I'll just put a generous amount of glue right on the plate. Then I'll put a little on the back. Now I'm going to add a few more items. I'm going to take some of my little letters that I've pulled out and I'm going to also glue them on. The first plate is quite dry now. I'm just going to put one more coat of glue on the areas to make sure it's really sealed down. 
Now that the glue has dried, you're ready to print. Run your hand lightly over your plate to make sure everything is glued down and there's nothing pointy sticking up. You'll need paint. I'm using inexpensive acrylic paint today. There's different brands you can try. To apply your paint, you'll need an old toothbrush, a foam roller maybe, and a tray to roll it on. You'll need some paper. This is just lightweight computer paper, some colored. You don't want it too thick, you don't want it too thin, but cut it slightly larger than your plate. To clean up, soft rag and your bucket of water. Now you're ready to print. There are two ways you can print your plate. First way, I'm using a roller. I've put some of my paint out in a styrofoam tray. Now I'm just rolling and making sure I'm getting a nice even coat on my roller. Now I'm going to roll it onto my plate. Take a piece of paper and just lightly drop on top. Don't take too long. Use either your palm of your hand to rub, or you can use a spoon. That. And that's the first one. Now we see not too much texture came out of here. I need a bit more ink on that, but I might put some ink on a different way. But it picked up quite lovely here. What you want is an area of light texture, more texture, and medium amount of texture. I'm going to use my brush and add a little paint to it, but just in one area. I want to pick up that real texture on the bottom that didn't pick up the first time. Now I've got lots of paint on. On for the top, I like the purple color on the bird. We'll just repeat and do it again. After I did my first print, I made a second plate and did some more printing. Here are some samples of what I got from the second plate. And here's some more from the first plate. There's so much variety you can do, you can have fun with this project. Thank you for coming to the studio and I hope you had fun exploring all the different ways you can make and print your collagraphs. We're interested in seeing what you created, so take a photo and tag us on social media. And please stay tuned for more lessons from Studio From Home with the Art Gallery of Nova Scotia.